Good morning all. Um, a while ago, and it was quite a while ago, in fact over two years ago, um, I bought this magazine. It's CBeebies uh, magazine, but I bought it because it has a free pair of walkie-talkies and a key fob which has some buttons on it. Um, and I was thinking at the time, I think I was into walkie-talkies, I was building some walkie-talkie kits. Um, I was wondering whether these were actually real, and I still don't know whether these are actually walkie-talkies or whether they're just sort of um, dummy things. Maybe they just create sound effects when you press these buttons. Maybe they don't do anything when you press these buttons. It actually doesn't say what these are at all. Um, apart from inside, it just says this, pretend to talk to Elmo on your walkie-talkies. Mmm, pretend. Oh. So I'm having a big tidy up at the moment. This needs to go. I'm going to have a look inside these things, see whether they are actually walkie-talkies or just something else. Choking hazard. I'd have thought that's mainly for whales and seabirds. Oh, this is embarrassing. I've got a feeling that these aren't actually anything. They're just lumps of plastic, which is really disgraceful. So it's coming apart. And uh, there's nothing in there at all, apart from a foamy piece of sort of soft plastic rubber and a support for that so that that doesn't push out of the unit. But no electronics. And uh, a similar story inside the key fob. It's just nothing. Well, I'm going to have to try and recycle these as best I can. Um, well, they're going to go into my recycling bin. But yeah, how disappointing is that? And this isn't a video. This isn't a video. Uh, quick, find something with some electronics in it. Uh, well, there is this, which is the original um, walkie-talkie kit. And I must have done a kit build at some point uh, where I made this. And so let's power it up. Uh, and now I can show off my um, new Vapex instance, which I bought. Well, I bought um, a couple of Vapex instance and also bought this 280 milliamp hour 9 volt battery which I don't think is LSD don't think it's low self discharge these have a lower rating 200 milliamp hours against 280 but these are low self discharge I went a bit mad I also bought a couple of um, these energizer uh, 9 volt batteries I think from a seller in Lithuania now these only say 175 so they're probably being quite uh, quite realistic um, so let's try this 280 milliamp hour has it got any charge? Oh yeah, that's well charged, so that should power the um, transceiver. Let's power it up. Now I don't know what frequency these are. Um, some were 27 megahertz. I think some walkie-talkies are 49 megahertz. Um, of course, I'm just going to hear static. Static. Um, if I press the switch, I transmit, but I don't know who I'm transmitting to. Probably no one, because that tiny antenna is not going to transmit very far. But um, yeah, I've got the other kit completely sealed, unopened with the instructions. Maybe I'll do a rapid build of that and see if these things will talk to each other. So in the kit, I've got a, a bag of components, instructions, and a printed circuit board here, some stickers to stick on the case, which say walkie talkie, just in case you weren't sure. Yeah, let's start to assemble that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Let's have a closer look. Right, here we are. Look, um, the frequency is 49.8 megahertz, brackets 9 volts. So perhaps the frequency changes a bit if you change the voltage. Nice circuit here. Um, this is probably mostly audio frequency stuff. This is clearly radio frequency. The changeover switch rewires the thing quite massively and it's not surprising because the uh, speaker is also used as a microphone so kind of everything has to be moved into new positions when you transmit that I think is quite fascinating um, I would have hated that when I was younger the fact that they reuse the speaker as a microphone but I actually quite like it now um, okay so now on the board uh, it looks like a lot of the resistors are standing up not laying down so it doesn't really make much sense to put low-lying components on first I am going to have to completely cross-reference uh, all of the components because they're only marked as sort of C1, R1, 
with their values on the schematic. Let's get going. Oh dear, this is bad. The speaker had a bit of wire dangling off it, so I started pulling on it, and it's not really soldered down properly to this uh, pad here, so I'm going to have to re-solder that before I lose that piece of wire altogether. Ugh. Right, I think I've uh, fixed that, so hopefully that uh, has survived. That can be soldered on. Um, similarly to the way I've done this one, just with a couple of wires down onto uh, pads on the board. Mmm, good. Right, C3, 82 puff. Um, a cluster of capacitors marked 403. 403, so 40N? No, they're far too small. Probably 40P. Uh, we've got 15, 35 and 50. Well, they've all got to be in picofarads. Right, there are all the ceramic caps in. Um, they look rather nice, actually, all matching colour to the colour of the board. Uh, oh, I think I might go on to the resistors now. And that's all the resistors done as well. Let's move on to the transistors. The transistors are in, so electrolytics next. Uh, now I'm fitting the uh, fixed coil 1.5 microhenries and the adjustable inductor, which is the main tuning thing, which goes in there. Right, what's left? Just the uh, changeover switch, the speaker and a 9 volt battery clip. Let's do it. Hey look, circuit bending. Cool. Right, there we are. It's done. Moment of truth. If I hook this up, do I get a second rushing sound? Yeah. I kind of do. But will they communicate? Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yes, it seems like they're a little out of tune. Let's try it the other way around. Uh, hello, 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 hello. That one seems uh, better tuned. So I think the only thing I can do to tune them is to um, turn the little uh, ferrite inside the inductor there a little bit. Got to be careful because they're very fragile. Uh, and they break easily. They uh, interfere with each other quite nicely. Oh, I've bent my antenna. But what I want to do is tune it, so I'm going to twiddle with this ceramic screwdriver, the little inductor there. It seems quite loose. So let's hold that in. That goes off. Twiddle it back. That goes off. So somewhere in the middle, out there. Hello, hello, hello. And then there's, will they feed back? Well, they certainly do. Now, when these things uh, distort, hello, 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 then the sound's pretty terrible. But what about just under the distortion level? I'll put this one near the camera microphone and this one to me. Hello. And I'm going to try and put it uh, just under the distortion level. How does that sound? But uh, are these walkie-talkies as good sound quality as these walkie-talkies? Which I bought all oh, round about the same time that I was messing around with all this. These are only about a fiver on eBay, I think. Let's try these ones. Hello, hello, hello. I put it up to the uh, microphone. Hello, how's this sound quality? I think it's a lot better. And uh, you can see that um, if I turn this one off, speaking to this one, they're clearly not on the same frequency band because these aren't receiving anything. There's a place for a little push button switch on here. And if I press transmit and start touching components, I can get the circuit to oscillate. And I think that's what that push button switch is for. It's a sort of Oh, too much. It's a buzzer transmit facility. Shame they didn't implement that and the switches weren't supplied. And uh, you can make them oscillate strangely in receive mode as well. Let's get them both going. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's fun. And now, some music. <laughs> and you know this is going to be bad, don't you? Yeah. So that's it. Fun with walkie-talkies. Cheerio.